Justin Paisant, a loving father, a son, a husband, and a U.S. Army veteran, joined the Army right after high school. He wanted to serve his country, um, but he also wanted to be a husband and a father and be close to family. That was uh, most important to him was family, big pillar of who he was. In 2016, Krista and Justin welcomed their son, but months later she told me she started to notice changes in her husband's behavior. He you know, didn't go put as much effort into like hunting or fishing or even spending a lot of quality family time, um, having like just him and I time, date nights and stuff like that. The family then started noticing Justin's speech changing too. Then started realizing more neurological symptoms like that. Uh, he started like whispering or he would use not quite the right word in conversation or he would tell me he didn't understand what I was saying. I had to use very specific wording for him sometimes. It took many trips to doctors and psychiatrists to figure out what was wrong before the family found themselves at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and that's when they got the diagnosis that would change their lives. By the end of the week we met with his team uh, that told us that they were quite confident that he has this frontal temporal dementia which was kind of a new term because when I, before Justin, when I heard the word dementia, I thought of Alzheimer's, forgetfulness, old people, that sort of thing. And it's not. Dementia actually is, there's so many different forms of it. And frontal temporal dementia, FTD is actually the first most common in people under 60 years old. Frontal temporal dementia is also commonly misdiagnosed as depression, bipolar disorder, or even anxiety. Uh, frontal temporal dementia is always fatal. There's no course of treatment. Any sort of medication that they give is really just to manage symptoms um, because it can cause behavioral issues. Justin passed away in March of 2022. Uh, we all lost pieces of him together. Uh, and I think, you know, it also takes a piece of us too, so FTD does not just affect the person, it affects the whole family, everybody that loves him, everybody that knew him um, feels it. Chris is now on a mission to educate people about FTD and to raise money for more funding for research trials. And, um, I feel, I feel um, especially passionate about that, uh, Justin's form of dementia does carry a, diagno a, a genetic component to it, which means that our son has a 50-50 chance of developing it himself yeah. as he gets older. So um, that's scary <laughs> to think about. Um, and uh, so it's really important that people know that, it's, that it exists. Krista told me that she would like Missoula to become more aware of different forms of dementia. Just for the kindness factor of seeing someone that looks different. Uh, Justin didn't always look sick. He just looked a little odd sometimes or behaved a little odd and you never really know what's going on in someone's life because we have, you know, in our elderly as well, we have a pretty um, large group of dementia people that uh, still deserve kindness and respect and dignity and then also we need a cure because it's all forms of dementia are fatal. There's no treatment for them right now and it is uh, often called the longest goodbye which is very true. Every day you lose them a little bit more and uh, that's it's painful. The memories of Justin for Krista and her son remain as she flips through the pages of pictures and memories of their life together and the life that was stolen from FTD. In Missoula, Catherine Rowley, MTN News.